I'm George Mazzell. Welcome back to our Super Magnet Man videos. I'm excited today to share with you a video that I've been wanting to do for a long time and I've been working on for a long time, and that is how to see magnetism in three dimensions. Now, for a long time, we've had the viewing film that lets you see basic indication of magnetic fields, and generally it's only in two dimensions. But I've come up with a way that'll help you see magnetism in 3D and how different magnets can interact with each other. I'm going to be doing this video in three parts. The first part is going to be how do you do it? We're going to work on the two basic designs of how to see the magnetism. And the bottom one is two magnets attracted to each other. And we're going to see what the flux looks like in between those. Then we've got the second one we'll do. The second part of this will come in with two magnets that are repelling each other and we're going to cover those as well. So what I want to do is first go into showing you the things that we're going to use and how we set up the magnets. The first of our ingredients that we use to make this work is we're going to use this material called Encapso K and it's two parts and it does a great job. You mix these two together and they become a silicon rubber that's very, very clear and allows you to see very well. They're also very viscous. That means that it resists flow. So the particles will be able to move around and it'll give us a really good indication of how the magnetic fields are aligning the iron particles. Which brings up the second item. We will be using iron powder. This is off of our website and we just use regular, really fine iron powder, not regular iron filings, but this powder. It's very, very soft and very fine and will give us a very good indication of the magnetic fields. Which brings up the next thing that we use, which is our, we use a mixing cup that I use to stir it up in. I also use these little cups that allow me to weigh out precise amounts. The third thing that we use is gonna be electronic scales. You will need a set of scales because the directions on using this material require you to measure it out to the nearest gram. And if you're gonna do that accurately, you're going to need a good set of scales. Then I have a set of molds. These are just any kind of shape that you make. You can get molding material and make your own molds, or you can find something like this, because what happens is the silicon rubber is not very hard to peel away from the plastic housing if you choose to do so. Now the last thing is the most important thing, the magnets. What kind of magnets would we use? You might think the neodymium magnets would be best, but the problem with the neodymium magnets, as I quickly found out, is the flux is so intense that it just packs all the particles in so densely that you just really can't get the feel for it that you would with ceramic magnets. So for all of my demonstrations, pretty much, maybe one or two that I do that uses Neo, I'm using ceramic magnets. So we get these off of the website. These are four by one by one. And I put two of them together to give me a much larger field and project a distance. So you can see they stick together. And what I'll be doing is mounting them a certain distance apart so that they'll stay there. And then I'll put my mold in the middle. So that gives you sort of an overview of what we're going to do. Let's get started. Now we've been through all the materials we're going to use. It's time to get started making our first mold of what it looks like to see magnetism in 3D. So we're gonna start with this. I have put these into bottles like this that makes it easier to dispense. I can just take the top off and squirt it in. It makes it a lot easier to hit the numbers. We're gonna start with our Encapso Part A. Now, what we need is about 80 uh, grams of this liquid of each one of these to put in this cup to give us enough to give us a depth that we're looking for in here. So what we're going to start with is putting part A on the scale, hit the tear button, and now this one will hold about 40 grams. So I'm gonna run it up to about 40, 32, 33. And that one stopped at 41. So I'll put about 39 in the next one. I'll pour this into the big cup. Go ahead and get part A in first. So that gives us about 81 and on this part B. I'm going to go ahead and pour all of this in. Now I think what I usually do is I make enough so that I have a little left over that I can put into some other containers. I'm mixing this up pretty good. 
I'm going to stir and stir, and then I'll put the iron powder in. Now, what we try to do is line this up so that this piece is going to be the same distance from each magnet. You can imagine that if it's a little closer to one than it is to the other one, it's going to be more intense on that one side, and it's going to sort of pull more of the powder and move the center line away from the center. But I've learned from experience, you don't pour the iron powder mix into this container while it's in the presence of the magnetic field. What it does, if you do that, is it makes a huge mess because all that iron inside this liquid is going to cause it to jump to the two magnets and it'll just start going there when you don't want it to and make a big mess and stick to all your magnets. So what we're going to do now is mix in our iron powder. This is the part that makes it more of an art than a science because it's kind of hard to know exactly how much you need. It depends on what you're really hoping to get. You see how thick it's starting to look and how much iron powder is in here? I'm just going to pour it in here. Powder sitting in here. And so now, this is where we'd have a chance to get it on our hands is doing this. We put it in the middle and watch what happens to the magnetic field in here. As you see the lines of flux starting to form, you can tell that this is about the right amount of iron powder because we're not getting a lot of clumpiness in here. Now, I can tell that my lines of magnetism have begun to form, but I'm not getting exactly what I want. So I'm going to start moving the magnets in a little bit at a time to make it a stronger magnetic field. So let's see what happens now if I let it sit for a minute like that. All right, now we're beginning to see a little bit more movement. Till that side is getting closer, so they're pulling a little harder, a little quicker there, so I'm gonna move this one right up next to it. Now they should be pretty even here. Now we need to let this sit. This would normally take overnight to do it, or if it's a sunny day, after it settles and it gets like you want to, if you've got an easy way of lifting the whole thing and keeping the magnets in the same position, you can put it out in the sun. It's kind of hard to do the way I've got it set up here, so we're just going to leave it sitting overnight and take a look at it tomorrow. Now, the next one we'll set up is make one where they are repelling. Okay, now we've had a chance to let this set overnight. We're going to take a look at what it looks like. I can touch in the corner, and I feel that it is hardened, so it did cure out overnight. So we're going to take a look at this, and what you have to have is some kind of a light background, like a white background. So I'm going to move this up to here, then we can take a closer look at it and see what we have. Okay, now what we're going to do is take a look at making our next mixture. Now, what I did was put the leftover mix in the refrigerator, which is supposed to give me just a little bit more time, but I'm going to try and pour it in and let's see how this works for the repelling fields. Now what we've got is identically the same magnets, two stacks of four by one by ones repelling each other and I have made it so that when I put this in the middle, the field should be exactly centered and we should get a center line that looks a lot like this one that we've already done, but we're going to let you have a look at it and see how it does. We'll check it back tomorrow night. Now just like we did on the other one, we're going to fill it off to the side all right, so that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to put it into the magnetic field very carefully. I've got a white background, so hopefully that lets us see it a little better. Get it centered. Now, from the top, we're going to watch and see what happens. You can see all of the air bubbles in there, and we need a little bit of time for those air bubbles to come to the top and pop and give us a clear field to look at. Now we're back to take a look at how it cured overnight. If you remember, we want to look at this in detail and see how it looks. We take it out and we can tell that this 
has cured completely. So we can leave it in the plastic, or if we want to take it out of the plastic, we can take it out of the plastic. I want you to look from the side angle now. So we're going to take a second and look at it from the side. And from the side, you can see in 3D now, we are getting the angles of the flux. As these two are repelling each other, and we're able to see how the flux bends, showing us the true lines of magnetism in complete 3D. So what we wanted you to see from this, first of all, how to do it. Now we've seen two designs. One, where we had attracting magnetic fields, and we're able to see what that looks like. Then we looked at repelling magnetic fields, and we just finished with that one, and we're able to see what they look like, not just in one plane, but if we're looking from the side, you can see how the flux lines are being affected in, in full 3D. We use the Encapsule K clear silicon rubber. It's a two-part. We mix it. It makes us a nice, firm rubber compound, but it's clear, and it traps these lines of magnetism in place because the iron powder responds to the magnetic field and it works. The other thing is we use ceramic magnets, or at least that's what's worked best for me, is ceramic magnets. We have a wide range of ceramic magnets, so you can look at everything from ring magnets to rectangles to disc, and you can see the different kinds of magnetic patterns that you have. From a scientific standpoint, one of the really good things we like to do is understand how magnetism really affects other other things around it, how iron affects it, how does two magnets close to each other, north and south, how do they affect each other in terms of making a motor work? And we're going to take a look at some of those in the next two videos. But for now, I wanted you to see how you can start thinking about viewing magnetism in 3D.